This is Q&A with Prof. A, the Ibato Ke Doc Bato Medical Review Series for Medical Students. The question thrown to us today is, Prof. A, what are the forces that govern glomerular filtration rate? The forces of filtration can be described in this equation. Deducting the forces that oppose filtration, such as your hydrostatic pressure in the Bowman space and your oncotic pressure in the glomerular capillary from forces that favor filtration, such as your hydrostatic pressure in your glomerular capillary and your oncotic pressure in your Bowman space, will give you this formula. Following changes in increased capillary filtration rate may be due to increased hydraulic permeability and surface area of your capillaries or your KF, or increased hydrostatic pressure in your glomerular capillary, or a decrease in oncotic pressure in your glomerular capillary. Note that your oncotic pressure in your Bowman space is normally zero, such that presence of protein in the urine increases your glomerular filtration rate. Manipulating the above factors will resolve edema, such as decreasing your hydraulic permeability and surface area of your capillaries, or decreasing your hydrostatic pressure in your glomerular capillary, or increasing your oncotic pressure in your glomerular capillary by giving albumin. This is a diagram of the relationship between your afferent arteriole and your efferent arteriole. As you can see, your glomerular filtration rate divided by your renal blood flow is your filtration fraction, which is normally 20%. Dilating your afferent arteriole will increase your hydrostatic pressure in your glomerular capillary such that it will increase your GFR, it will also increase your renal blood flow, but there will be no change in your filtration fraction. Now, constricting your afferent arteriole will decrease your hydrostatic pressure in your glomerular capillary, it will decrease therefore your glomerular filtration rate and your renal blood flow. Again, there will be no change in your filtration fraction. Now, if we play around with the efferent arteriole, such as if we dilate the efferent arteriole, it will decrease your hydrostatic pressure in your glomerular capillary. This will decrease your GFR, but it will increase your renal blood flow. What will happen with your filtration fraction? It will go down. Now, if we constrict the efferent arteriole, your hydrostatic pressure in your glomerular capillary will increase. This will increase your GFR, but it will decrease your renal blood flow. In the end, it will increase your filtration fraction. Manipulating the efferent arteriole by constricting it will give you the highest filtration fraction rate. While decreasing the radius of your efferent or constricting it, it will increase the GFR. Or decreasing the radius of the afferent it will decrease your GFR. Certain compounds affect the afferent and efferent arterioles, such as your prostaglandins, dopamine, and acetylcholine. It will dilate your afferent, while your NSAIDs or norepinephrine, it will constrict the afferent arteriole. While your angiotensin II, it will constrict your efferent arteriole, while your ACE inhibitor, it will dilate the efferent arteriole, decreasing your glomerular filtration rate and will decrease your proteinuria preventing further renal damage. Renal clearance, Cx of a given substance, is the ratio of the renal excretion rate, which is Ux times the volume per minute of the substance to its concentration in the blood plasma, which is Px. So the volume of plasma from which the substance is completely cleared per unit time, it's called your renal clearance. Its unit is usually in ml per minute. The relationship of clearance with GFR is seen in this slide. If your clearance is less than GFR, there's net tubular reabsorption of your solute. If your clearance is more than GFR, there's net tubular secretion of the solute. While if your clearance is the same as GFR, there is no net secretion or reabsorption. Inulin can be used to calculate GFR because it is freely filtered and is neither reabsorbed nor secreted. In other words, clearance of inulin measures GFR. However, the process is too cumbersome and cannot be used in the clinics. Creatinine 
which is a product of muscle metabolism, is commonly used instead. However, it slightly overestimates GFR because creatinine is moderately secreted in the proximal convoluted tubule. These are the different renal clearance formulas that you should know. And note the highlighted ones because these are the commonly used formulas in the exam or in the clinics. For more high yield topics in renal physiology, don't forget to click the subscribe button.